clients and there's this blinking prompt, that's where I'm going to run my programs. So typically in a Linux environment, you don't have to double click icons. You can actually type the name of the program at a prompt, hit enter, and that program will run. And that's where we'll start to keep things simple. So let's give this a try. I'm going to go ahead and first increase the font size here just so we can zoom in. But this is just for the sake of lecture here. So now we've got a bigger font. And I'm going to go ahead and save this file like I would on any operating system. Save as. I'm going to go to my desktop just for kicks. And again, all this looks a little different for Mac OS or Windows, but it's the same thing once you get used to it. Hello.c. So the convention when writing programs in C is to call them something.c. So now I'm going to save this on my desktop. The file itself contains nothing. Let's just do a sanity check. If I minimize this window for a moment, there it is. It's just a file, just like Mac OS or Windows. There's nothing in it because it's just this big blank text file. So let's start coding. Let's start programming. Include standard io.h. We'll come back to that in a moment. Int main void. I remember type seeing that before. Here's some curly braces. And then the command was printf uh, o h i world exclamation point backslash n semicolon. Now I've done this some time so it kind of gets easier over time, but that is a transcription of what we had before. So it's very underwhelming, it, even though it might syntactically be a bit ugly, but let's actually run this thing. So first I'm going to hit save, either with control S or I can do it sort of old school file save. And now I've saved the file on my desktop. But now I need to run it, but、mm, not yet. What needs to happen before you can run it? And、we need to compile it. So it turns out that in a Linux environment, and also in a Mac environment, and also in a Windows environment, if you download the appropriate software, but it's, the instructions vary by operating system. So again, we're standardizing here. Notice that at the bottom of the screen, inside of gedit, I have this again blinking prompt. So what the appliance does when you boot it up, Is even though we could give you all unique usernames, it's just kind of a pain to create a username and password for a program that's running on your own computer. So instead, we decided that everyone will take on the identity by default of John Harvard. And John Harvard's username is jharvard. And so when John Harvard is automatically logged in, you have his blinking prompt and his home directory, his folder of storage. But when you submit, well, that's at the point we'll ask you your actual name and so forth. But for now, only you can access this account. And notice, At this prompt, I can do certain things. In Linux, and this is what we're seeing now, the operating system Linux is very often navigated by way of textual commands, not by clicking and pointing. And so the textual command we'll say first is ls. ls is shorthand notation for list. And when you hit ls and hit enter, what you see is a list of all of the files and folders in. John Harvard's default directory or folder. John Harvard's default directory or folder is conventionally called his home folder. So in Windows, this would be my documents. In Mac OS, this would be documents. In Linux, it's home directory. So we're in my home directory, and you can see that you have a desktop folder. And also, because I was doing a bit of prep work, I also created a lectures folder. And they're in bold just to kind of convey to me, the human, that these are directories. So I want to actually go where to compile this program. So it's on my desktop. Indeed, it's not in this directory. So instead of double clicking, which we could do, again, we're starting at the simplest form here, I can do cd desktop and then hit enter. And notice what happens. My prompt just changed. So, in the interest of user friendliness, we've pre configured the appliance to always remind you where you are by just telling you parenthetically what directory you're in. Otherwise, it's very quickly to kind of get lost or forget where you cd'd into. So, now I'm in desktop. So, if I type ls, I'll see the file I created. I don't see trash. I don't see、uh, file system. I don't see those fake icons that are just there to be user friendly. I only see actual files and folders that I put there. So, there's hello. C. So now I need to compile this. So, how do you go about compiling a program? Well, there's actually a few ways, but they all produce the same result. The simplest way to translate a program written in C to zeros and ones is with a command called GCC, GNU Compiler Collection. It's a, a very,、uh, it's very popular, very standard, very robust program that simply makes you type GCC space the name of the program you want to compile. And that's it. It does all the conversion for you. So if I go back to gedit here, and then let me zoom in just so it's nice and big, and I type gcc hello.c enter, the fact that nothing happened is actually wonderful. 
In fact, when you get, sit down to write your first program and something does happen, that means you made a mistake. Because what you'll see is a whole bunch of error messages. You left off a semicolon or you did something wrong. Whereas Scratch isn't quite as pedantic and doesn't yell at you, it just doesn't work. GCC will check your code and say, mm -mm, I can't, I'm not converting that to zeros and ones. There's some mistake or mistakes. But no error messages is good. If I now type ls, you'll see two things. I have just created a program that by convention is called a.out. This is something like whatever.exe in, Mac OS,、uh, in Windows or whatever.app in Mac OS. So a.out is just the default name for a program. So to run it, double clicking on this is not going to have any effect. This is just text. I can run dot slash a.out. So a.out, and then just as an aside, the dot slash is for the following reason. Because this is a stupid little program I myself wrote and it didn't come with the operating system, I didn't run an installer, because it's in my current directory, I can't just type its name like I typically can on a computer and it just knows where to look. I have to tell it where to look. And so in Linux and Mac OS and even in Windows, if you use the right tools, dot is shorthand notation for the current directory, wherever I'm in, whatever folder I opened. And as an aside, anyone know what the parent directory is? If you want to go backwards, it's going to be dot dot. So we're going to see conventions like this. But for now, dot just means look here, and slash just means here slash file name. So enter, oh my God, I wrote my first program. Like a dot out contains now zeros and ones, and they're in a nice specific pattern that's understood not only by the operating system, but also by the CPU. Intel inside is relevant here because the zeros and ones that GCC outputted are structured in such a way that these zeros and ones mean print, these zeros and ones mean quit, these zeros and ones mean add, these zeros and ones mean subtract, and so forth. There are conventions that Intel and others have decided on. So, unfortunately, this is kind of a stupid name for a program. So, I can actually improve upon this so that when I write my programs, I don't have to brag to my friends. I just wrote a.out, which would be nice to give it a name like hello. So, to compile a program with a specific name, we just introduce one new idea. Most programs that you run by typing their names at a prompt take what are called command line arguments, or options, or switches. Any of this jargon is relevant. And here we're saying GCC hyphen O. The O happens to、uh, represent outputs, and I know that just from reading the documentation. So GCC hyphen O, hello, then hello.c, with spaces in between, are saying compile hello.c and output it to a file not called a.out, the default, output it to a file called hello. So now if I go back to my prompt and zoom in, I can recompile this with GCC dash O, hello, then the name of the source code, hello.c, enter. Nothing seems to have happened. LS, though, there's hello, but mm -mm, that doesn't work. Why? Right. So, dot slash is important only because, again, this is not a standard program that I bought and installed or downloaded. Rather, I wrote it. It's in my own little directory, which means I need to be more explicit. And dot slash hello indeed runs that program. There. So, you know, we can actually simplify even further because you'll soon see that GCC O hello one just gets hard to remember. Two, it just gets tedious. My God, just to compile your program, you have to type all these commands. But as an aside, realize that Linux comes with all these tricks. Right now, I'm hitting the up and the down arrow on my keyboard, and it's remembering seemingly an infinite supply of things I've typed before. So, there's lots of little tricks like this. If you want to do what you just did, you can typically hit up and hit enter, and it will just do it again. But I can do better than that. To compile a program, I can also just make it. There is another program on Linux called Make. And Make figures out for you typically what types of GCC commands need to be executed in order to compile your programs. Because we're doing something fairly simple right now. But if I actually do make hello, this will actually make a program called hello and figure out what to type for me. So let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and type just make hello. Notice the dichotomy here. I'm not typing make hello.c. I'm typing just make hello. And the program is going to assume if I've said hello, it will look for a file called Hello.c. I hit enter. OK, a y well, that's even more friendly. It's saying,、mm -mm, I don't even need to compile this into zeros and ones because you just did this. Well, I really wanted to do it. So let me remove those files I created. The command in Linux to remove files is rm, remove. 
So there's a pattern here, right? Rather than ever type really a whole word, the folks who invented Linux and Unix and these other operating systems try to make the commands as compact as possible. So rm means remove. So I can remove hello. I can also remove a dot out for good measure. So just putting a space and separating them on the same line will then prompt me remove regular file hello, whatever that means. So y for yes, enter. Remove regular file a dot out, y for yes, enter. Now, if I do ls, notice we're just back to where I started with just hello.c. So let me go ahead now and run make hello, enter. And notice even more stuff appeared on the screen. And this is because we've pre configured the compliance to know about all sorts of useful commands that, my God, it would be a pain in the neck to type that whole line of code every time you want to compile a program. So, make is going to automate this for you. And we'll tease apart over time what these various flags or switches mean. But for now, the compelling feature is that we have a program called hello. I can go ahead and run it as such. And now I have oh, hi world. Executed much more succinctly. Yeah.、Uh, really quickly, so programs that are actually runnable are in bold? Programs that are actually runnable are typically in this program written in bold as our directories. And it's just a convention, it will differ in different programs. So, just to tease you with one other thing. So, this is again the CS50 appliance. If I minimize this, we're back at our desktop. But realize this is a full fledged modern computer. I can click the Firefox icon and I can go to Google.com inside of the appliance and actually now do everything I could on the internet inside of this machine. Moreover, what's nice about the appliance, irrespective of the internet, is that especially in the dorms and houses, if you have kind of flaky wireless, you don't need to be constantly connected to the internet. The appliance boots independent of the internet, so you can now. Now, work anywhere, anytime, including over breaks, if, if that's at all appealing,、um, without actually needing to be perpetually online. And it's all irrespective of what your actual operating system is. Any questions? All right, so that's a lot to absorb all at once. Why don't we? Oh, yes. Good question. Why is it make hello and not make hello.c? Honestly, just because. Like the program's authors decided that if you type make hello, it will assume that you want、uh, hello.c and it will look for those files. We'll also see that it's more motivating in future weeks because you can.、Uh, You can create nicknames so that when you say make something, something can be defined by you as doing a sequence of steps that you wanted to automate. Uh, if you had another program called hello, but you wanted to compile hello.c, would it get confused? No, because that's what we did a moment ago. I still had the hello program, but so I typed make hello, and it said,、mm -mm, it's up to date because it had already been compiled, and it realized that it would create the same output. So, in short, no. Yeah? If you were to type make hello.c, would it have done the same thing? Uh, good question. So, and actually, I can emphasize this quite explicitly. When in doubt, honestly, when you have a computer, when you have a keyboard in front of you, try it. The worst you can do is screw everything up and download a new appliance. <laughs> so, make hello.c, enter. Nothing to be done for hello.c. Well, the last time I saw that, it related to this. So, let me get rid of this. So, now let me do make hello.c. It doesn't want to compile it because what it's now looking for, it's now realizing that this is not a file that needs to be compiled. So, in short, error message, though it's not explicitly clear that this is a,、uh, a problem. Yeah? Do the files you're creating exist in a real directory on your hard drive, or is it all? Really good question. Do the files we create, like hello.c, exist in a Uh, file on your own hard drive. Actually, no. If you poke around your own Mac or Windows hard drive, you will just see one huge file. It's called a VMDK file, virtual something or other. And that means that all of the files you create inside of the appliance are actually hidden inside of one gigabyte file. And、uh, that gigabyte is chopped up into the individual files. But you'll see over time in the specifications for P sets and in the online documentation, you can interact with the appliance, with your own computer, that home directory. That John Harvard's files are stored in, you can actually mount that on your own computer. You can connect to it、uh, via various internet programs. So, in short, you, you will see that we can interact with this in all sorts of ways, especially if you find this environment just unappealing or confining. You won't uh, uh, strictly need to use it. There s many ways to make use of the appliance still.